Hello guys, it's T-Rom here bringing you another tutorial today. This time we're going to be pretty much basically making a hologram grid in After Effects, I guess that's what you call it. I mean, Medifrags is used in some of his montages. It's almost like a pop-up screen you can see going across a clip. So, I'll show you an example of that now. So basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to Get our clip, which I already got, and we're going to drag it onto the composition. 1280 by 720, 59.94 frames per second, the usual. So we're not going to worry about any color correction or anything for this clip just yet. But let's just say, I don't know. We can stick it right about here. So it'll be easiest for this if we just go ahead and start by making a new composition. We'll just make this 20 seconds, 1280, second frame rate, all that. And we'll go ahead and start off by drawing a rectangle. And we can go ahead and change the contents of that. We can change the fill to, I don't know, I'll say blue. And then we can change the stroke, say, I don't know, lighter blue. Does that look all right? See how that looks. Can't really see it right there, but that's okay. Let's make it a little bit wider. Stroke. Let's turn the opacity down. Eh, it looks all right. You can measure whatever you want, but that looks fine for now, just for the tutorial's sake. So, next we're going to want to add some text elements to this rectangle we got here. So, we're going to head and go grab our text tool. I'll just make it, to be simple, I'll just make it Arial. Uh, if I can get it. There we go. Just make it Arial Bold. It's pretty good. We'll just go ahead and type Enemy. Approaching, and we can make that all caps if that's better. Uh, I'll turn off caps lock too. Refresh it. Let's just scale this down a little bit, so we got to make it fit in the box. I feel like I spelled approaching. Oh, one sec. I've got it right. That's just, uh, i got to be that grammar Nazi there. Alright, we're going to grab the top one. There we go. And then we approach it. That's pretty good. And say we want to make it so it stands out like a pop-up, a warning. So usually you do with the red text color for that. So let's just see how that looks. We'll just highlight all this. And I'll change the text color to red. It doesn't really blend too well with this, so... Let's see what would work well. We could do a gray, black. Nah. Let's see. Let's do a yellow. Yellow might look alright. Looks better than the red does. There we go. So we got an enemy approaching. So, make it more of a flickering effect. We can go to transform opacity. And this is something I did in my other montages. We'll do alt click on opacity and we'll do wiggle. Let's do 20, oh, oops, parentheses 20, comma 20, and, and then, there we go, and then you can see the opacity will kind of flicker of the text enemy approaching, kind of give it that warning glow effect. So, there we go. And then, what do you want to say? We can go say, let's go back to the original clip. What we had. Let's go ahead and add some text. Let's add another text layer saying, I don't know, whatever guns you, what guns you have. What does that look like? I don't know, M4? I'll just say an M4 for this. M4A1. You gotta apologize. I'm, I'm apologizing, guys. My voice has been kind of bugging me today, and I'm feeling a little sick, so if I sound a little weird, then that's why. So, just say that. Let's see. We can go to the internet. Go grab a picture of an M4A1 Modern Warfare 2. There we go. That'll work. Let's see. Let's just go ahead and save that image to the desktop. Go and we'll go ahead and import that. 
4A1. And we'll drag that onto the composition. There we go. And we can, oh, we can mess around with the blending modes to see if anything looks better. Kind of like some of those first, oh, that looks pretty cool right there. And we can swap blending mode into that. Uh, I might hurt my phone go off. Hard light. Let's just turn on the text to see how that looks. Might look kind of messed up with the colors, but that eh, looks alright. You can just do that to keep it uniform across the entire thing. There we go. And we can say, what else you want to say? I mean, this is really whatever, what do you want to put in it? But we'll just say, yeah, do a raft because I don't care. You can say, I don't know, we can just put like latitude. Oh, it's freezing on me there for a second. Latitude. Let's just scale that down. These are some extra text things to add to this. It's almost like the HUD I've done before, but and then let's just duplicate that layer. Control D, move it down below it. Just shift that down, move the latitude down a little. Let's change the bottom one to longitude. And then we'll do one more thing. We'll do another text layer right over here. And actually, you know, let's just duplicate that layer to keep the same text size, and we'll just move it over. And this will be like the randomly generated text I did in another tutorial, where it's the alt clicking again. But we're going to have to go click down on this layer. We're going to have to do animate character offset. Then alt click on character offset. We'll do wiggle. Let's see, 10, 10. And then we just got to change that to numbers so it doesn't keep, or else it'll flip through text. So let's just say, let's just hit a random sequence of numbers. Let's put a, yeah, that will look fine. And then what's this layer rate? I don't know what that is. Let's delete that. We can duplicate this layer. And since it's randomly generating, if you duplicate the layer, it'll still be random on the top. Two separate layers give you completely different numbers. They won't be the same since you just duplicated it. Looks pretty good. And what else could we do to this? We could say, we could add something about the map. We can add scrapyard. There we go. Let's just grab this right here. Just save that image to desktop. Scrapyard layout. And then we'll drag that onto the composition. Scale that down a little bit. I realize it's got a watermark on it, but that's all right for now. Just shrink that down a little bit. Stretch it out. We're going to change the blending mode on this, too, to make it fit better with everything. Let's do layer blending mode, hard light. And then we can add a, let's say we'll just add a yellow dot. Where are we? We're right over here. Let's shrink that down a little bit. Just say nine. We'll just draw a dot where we are. Oh, wrong color. Whoops. Let's make it a yellow dot. A dot could be right here. Oh, what's going on? No, stupid things not changing colors. There we go. Do a yellow dot right there to show where we are. Let's see if you can see it back. In, eh, it might not show off right there, but that's eh, okay. We can just, if you want to do it, you can just add an ellipse. You can just add a tiny ellipse of where you are. It's going to be, it's going to be minuscule, but we'll just move that down a little bit to fit it better. And then we can just, I don't know. Got some empty space there, so we can just shift these all up some to fit some space better. See if that looks any better. That looks alright. And I mean, you can use 3D models of guns, you can use clips or shots left in the clip, whatever you want to do. So we're just going to go back to this composition, and we'll go ahead and drag Comp 2 on top of it. And where is this? Why is it not showing up? Switch is there. We go. Got that. That's what I needed. And we'll just turn. Which one is that? Oh, oops. there we go. Turn that off. And we're gonna want to go ahead. We'll make this a 3D layer, so that we can rotate it. 
about the x, y, and z axis, and we can scoot it back. Because for this, we're not going to want to leave it flat because it's not going to be the right look inside the game. So we'll give it an angled look like that, and maybe scoot it back a little bit more. There we go. Put it over here, put it down a little bit. And then we can go ahead and turn the opacity down to say 50%. And let's see, if we want to do effect, generate, I think it is, where is it? It's under, sim, I think, simulation, no. Where is it? I'm trying to add just a little glow to it. Can't seem to remember where the glow is. Stylize, that's where it should be, there we go, glow. So you can just add a glow, make it look pretty cool. Let's see, we'll just glow up a little bit. Color A, we'll try it. We can match it to whatever the actual thing looks like. There we go. Blue. Take it a light blue. I don't care, really. Looks pretty good, I'd say. And then we can say, let's just say we want to freeze the frame so you don't have to do all that motion tracking, masking, all that work. So we'll just cut this frame here, and then we'll do on this one, we'll do layer time, freeze frame. And if you know, didn't know this, you, that just freezes the frame. You can stretch it as long as you want. So we'll just stretch that down there. Let's, let's make it a little bit longer because that's not even a whole second. That's about a second long. There you go. Let's, and then make sure you line these up at the end here. Oops, get out of here, taskbar. There we go. What's it doing? Oh crap, I hit, I hit do time remap by accident. Guess so. Uh, After Effects does not like me sometimes, I just gotta say that. Seems to like to screw with me. Make sure it takes as long as possible to do what I want. So we'll just do freeze frame. Let's hope this works this time. Just shift that back some, stretch that out. What is it? <sighs> After Effects, you are a pain in my ass sometimes. God. Well, I'm hoping you get the point of what I was trying to say. Let's just have it read. But, yeah, basically, I'm just trying to get it to stay here. And something else you can do to give it a better look is you can let's see. I'll just screw these layers. Let's go back to here. And you can control D to duplicate the layer. We're going to stick this underneath it. We're going to go to effects and presets. And you can type in fill. We're going to go fill down here under generate fill. Drag it onto, make sure to drag it onto the bottom layer. Let's so change that color to black. And then we're going to want to smooth, put that down kind of farther. And this is basically going to be a shadow. So we're going to rotate it. So it's flat on the ground. Oops, not that way. Just move it back down a little bit farther. There we go. That's pretty good. We can do a Gaussian oops, uh, Gaussian blur to that layer as well. Right there. So we're going to push up the blurriness. That's right about that. that looks pretty good. Let's make a shadow. And then on that one layer, we can just mask around the gun. That's kind of why I was trying to do the freeze frame, because that would be a pain to have to mask it frame by frame for everything. So honestly, if it would just work with me right now, I mean, then I could show you what I'm trying to say. But it does not seem to want to do that. Freeze frame, please. Work right now, please. What am I doing? Oh my god, this ah, sickness is getting to me. I'm not even doing the right thing. Sorry, guys. Should be trying to freeze the bottom layer. I'm trying to... Yeah, I'm not thinking straight today. I can tell you that much. So i got to freeze this frame right here. Let's just see. Shift that down a bunch. Sorry if that confused you guys. I'm... Hopefully it didn't do too much damage to the tutorial, but... If it does, just comment on it and I can fix it up for you. So we'll just fit that up to that right there. Let's see. Come on, Task Go away. There you go. Now that we got that frame frozen, 
stretch that out down to there. Let's make sure those, uh, back that up one frame. And I'm going to want to drag, I'll just drag that one down to there too. Drag that back. I'll get rid of those right there. Control Shift D to split and delete. Control Shift D, split and delete. And now we'll just go ahead and mask this layer out. Never mind, we'll just go back to that. Let's zoom in about 200%. H tool to move the hand, and then we'll just mask. We can just apply two masks to this one. Just mask it right there. We'll mask it around one side of the gun, and the other mask will use the other side of the gun. Cool. If you guys were doing this for an actual video, I'd recommend taking a little bit longer to work on your pen tool. There we go. And we'll do one more mask. Let's say we can just control D, duplicate the layer. Just delete the mask off this one. And then we'll mask it on this side of the gun. Let's see, we'll just do it up there, there to there, 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 there. See, I'll just mask it around there. And there you go. I'll zoom back out. Let's see, let's, let's just deselect there, and you can see you got a mask around the gun pretty well. You got the shadow. And then you can just go ahead and move the entire thing to a new composition, color correct it with that in it so it kind of mixes. I'll just go ahead and throw comp one into there. You can see the rotating text. Let's do effect, magic bullet looks, looks, edit that. <laughs> And I'll just use a preset to make it go quicker. You can screw around with whatever you want. So, that should be fine. There you go. So, that's basically it, guys. And that's pretty much how you create one of those grids. You can animate it, move it however you want. But that's the basis of it. So, thanks for watching, guys. And give it a Thumbs up, like it, comment if you want, subscribe, whatever, but have a good day.